Roads uh, are still a bit bumpy, I can tell you guys. Look at this for you guys, the Lachlan Valley. This trip, since we worked our way across, has been left, right, centre, left, right, centre. I feel like I'm in the fucking army. Uh, All these fucking potholes and red kidneys bike in the theatre in the meantime, they disappeared in water, didn't they, buddy? Yeah, it's now he has got a bear's hay, and we're going to have a look at that, aren't we? Two single fucking feet, man! You were offered. Yes. Also, Euro. Euro. Yep. And these are one of the rarer ones, are they? They only made 200. So, so you had they, trouble, didn't you, getting it into Well, they, it, it, it cost me $10,000. It cost me $3,000 for them to take the wheels off. What you doing, Kimmy? <laughs> Kimmy! Kimmy, what are you doing? What are you doing, mate? What? Come on, mate. So we're about to leave Orange. <clears throat> Kimmy's got a bike back. Won't be filming much, I don't reckon. Going down the car, because my memory card's full. Someone forgot to change it. Yeah, been, here, else. been here fucking long enough, why didn't you change yeah. it? Hello. Hey. Which way is that going to send me, babe? I'll just slow down a bit. We're going to go left, babe. Yep. Although we've only got 112 k's, we don't really need fuel. You're right. If we see a survey, we'll fuel up, though. Yep. Taking me down the back street away from the servos, though, isn't it? Yeah. There is a servo there, babe. How do we yeah. get in there? Yes, in through there we can get in. Um, what do we got here? It looks like a red one on the other end. Oh, yeah. no entry here. Oh. Uh, we'll go is. around, go around. Oh, no, we can't go around. Oh, fuck it. Fuck it. It doesn't matter. We're idiots. We're in here now. We're bikers, boat. So we've just left Orange and we're on the way through to Cowra, heading over to Canberra today. I won't be filming a real lot on this first bit because um, the memory card's almost full and I forgot to replace it. How's that, eh? Three days at Orange and I never replaced the memory card, babe. Yeah, I know. Hey? Go figure. Go figure, eh? We must have been having ball for fucking time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, slow down a bit. These roads uh, are still a bit bumpy, I can tell you guys. They are shocking some places. Anyway. We will soldier on, won't we, Zoidy? We chose to come here. Yeah. Cowra is located 310 metres above sea level and 305 kilometres west of Sydney, via Katoomba and Bathurst. Over the past three decades, some country towns have grown and prospered. Others have declined, both in importance and in population. Cowra has grown. Located on the Lachlan River, it has become the commercial and administrative centre of Shire, where livestock, wool scouring, vegetable growing and processing, vineyards and tourism are the main drivers of the local economy. Am I recording? Yeah. I am? Yeah. Oh, yeah it's not showing up on the thing. But we've got to go right? We've, we're going right, yes. Okay guys, so we are going to go into McDonald's, aren't we, sweetie? Yeah. That's right, we get stuffed up with this driveway, don't we? Sometimes? Oh, sometimes we've got a tendency of picking the wrong driveway. But old Rusty, he's got it under control now. 
fucking oath by oath. Yes, I have both. I've picked the right one for a change. Yay! So we're going to have some brekkie here. And um, I will change this drive through, drive through, go around here, boat. Car park this way. Um, and I will change this memory card, babe. Straight back where you are. Mate, no, don't turn your wheel. Yep, keep going that way. Now turn your wheel. Straighten up. Yep, yep. Now straighten the gut. Yep, that's fine. You're right here. So we'll hop off and have a bit of a bit of a brekkie, won't we, babe? That's all, folks. That's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so we've just had brekkie, haven't we, babe? Yeah. We are going to fuel up first because uh, we'll make it the rest of the way. We could probably make our way through to Canberra without fueling up, but we're going to fuel up anyway. Better off having too much petrol than not enough, aren't we, babe? I don't know. It adds weight. Go to Mac, it's fucking adds weight. I don't hear you, don't hear you complaining about that. Gotta eat. Mm. Gotta eat, babe. Gotta eat. Okay then, so we're fueled up. And we're on the way to Canberra, aren't we? And why are we going to Canberra? Because we got family there, haven't we? Well, you got a sister. Well, that's family, isn't it? Yeah, if she wants to call you family. Yeah, well, there's another problem in there, eh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, should be right. If she doesn't want to call the family, we'll keep going. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, but... Uh, we're going through the Lachlan, what is it, Lachlan Way in the boat? Lachlan Valley Way, I think. Yeah, Lachlan Valley Way through to Canberra. So, no rain yet. They are predicting 20 to 40 mils or something late today, or later on this afternoon, about 3 o'clock. So, it is 11 o'clock now. We've got away early. The reason we well this morning, didn't we? We did. And um, we'll see how we go with rain. If it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. All the better if it don't, in the boat. Yeah. Yeah. But with this electrical nightmare on my head, you probably won't see any footage anyway. Because I can't be bothered setting the GoPro up so it's waterproof. Look at this for you guys, the Lachlan Valley. Stunning. Even though it is an overcast day, isn't that right, babe? That is right, babe. That is right, babe. I wish you'd stop calling me, babe. How many babes are you going to say in this Series. Oh, I love a babe. Love a good babe. Yeah. <laughs> but look at that. That is stunning. You can see patches of canola fields. We've been coming through a fair few actually up through this way, haven't we? Not quite so far advanced as the ones down through um, the Newell Highway. The one we're going up um, where Forbes and all that parks and that. Let's not talk about that highway. Why is that, sweetie? That's the shocker, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. The shocker. That's a joke, isn't it? <laughs> the shocker. Because <laughs> that's what happened in the boat. Your shock fell apart. Yeah, that's the shocker. <laughs> but we could be coming back down that way, yeah? We could. Huh? Yes. As long as there's no water over the road. There was water over the road the other day when we went through. Not much, but I reckon with all the rain they've had out that way, it's going to be a bit deeper, isn't it? But, hopefully we're not due to go back down that way for a while yet. So we're coming up to the little down of Boorua. Well, we think that's how you pronounce it in the Lachlan Valley. On the Lachlan Valley away. With colourful Irish heritage, wide open landscapes on the Boorua River, a long tradition of pastoral activity, a vibrant township and pure country charm. Bora is an early Australian country town located just 70 minutes northwest of Canberra. It is possibly the most overtly Catholic town in Australia. Not only was its handsome St. Patrick's the first Roman Catholic church built west of the Great Divide and Range, but the church boasts a particularly beautiful stained glass window added in 1881, which includes an image of Daniel O'Connell, liberator of Ireland, below an image of St. Patrick. Today, with tree-lined streets and much recent and impressive beautification, it is a model of small and charming country town. Have a look to see what this town's known for. It's probably a farm, I'll take a guess. Farming town, livestock, um, crops, as in canola, because we've seen a lot of canola fields, haven't we? 
Yep. So this is only a guess at the moment, guys. I will Google it and we will see if old Rusty's right. There wouldn't be much more here, would there, babe? <laughs> I don't say that. It's a cute little town. It is actually a nice little town, yeah, looking town. I do like some of these little towns in New South Wales and Victoria and that. So we're coming into a little bit of drizzle, aren't we? We're right on the edge of a heap of shit at the moment. But it looks like so we're going to come into it in a minute. It's the first rain we've had for the day. So that's not too bad, is it? We were prepared. Yes, we have got our waterproofs on. Well, not jackets. Only got our leather jackets on, but we have got our leggings on. The jackets can take a bit. Yeah, I reckon we might have to get the camera up. Off the, go off the top of the hill before I look at that. So guys, I'll probably be shutting this down here and I'll probably see you in Canberra. I reckon. For the simple fact is, I've got too many much electrical on top of my helmet, as in a battery, a USB battery as well, plugged into the GoPro, so it's not totally waterproof. Oh God, it's a bit of a frozen plane. You yeah. might start thinking. Oh, I should have pulled over there, babe. Could have, yeah. Well, I should have. Should have, would have, could have. Right, babe, right. Seems to be, guys, you just heard me say right. This trip, <laughs> since we worked our way across, has been left, right, centre, left, right, centre. And that's for potholes, isn't it, babe? I just tell Kim, go left, right. What's that up? <laughs> I feel like I'm in the fucking army. Yeah. Although this this road from Cowra has been really good. You know, there's been a few potholes and that, but not nothing like we've been coming through, is there, babe? Yeah, we're going to have to get the camera off. So I'll shut you down here in a sec, guys, because we're about to go through a bit of rain. And I'll get it off the helmet. As soon as I can pull over somewhere, that is. Right. Right. Yep, up top of the hill by looks we got a pull over. Oh, I think, okay. babe. Just here? Yeah. Just put your indicator on, babe. Yep. Bit of a driveway thing. Oh, it's a road. So I'll just pull up just here. Turn her off. Okay, so we're taking her off, aren't we, babe? Taking her off. Taking her off. She's getting the gear off, guys. Look, look. <laughs> well, we had absolutely poured down for about 90, 95 kilometres. We're still on holiday, so we're still having fun. We had to get to Canberra, and when we did, we were saturated, wet through. But we were spending the next couple of nights there at family's place. Good day, guys. Look at that. What a beautiful sunset! What do you reckon? Beautiful sunset in the mic. Hey? Yeah. Yeah. We've arrived in Canberra, haven't we, babe? And what an eventful day we've had today, eh? The things you do for family, eh, babe? The things you do. 90 kilometres we had to We had to ride about 280, 290 kilometres, eh, from Cowra to Canberra for family. Yeah, I mean, you got to do what you got to do sometimes, don't you? <laughs> yeah. But 90 kilometres of that was in torrential rain, wasn't it? Yes, Bob. <laughs> well, you're not agreeing. Well, I suggest. Well, don't yeah. you think you're going to get a bed if you agree? Yeah, that's right. Right. No, it was in pouring rain, and then all suddenly, all them fucking potholes that wrecked Kimmy's bike in, you know, in the meantime, mm -hmm. they disappeared in water. So it was a treacherous trip in here. Now, we're going to have a special guest coming up in the next couple of days, aren't we, babe? Yeah. Eh? Eh? We've got a bloke here. He's a fucking pom, but I won't hold that against him. <laughs> That's him there. Mick the Dick. Mick the Dick. <laughs> Here's Mick there. Now, he has got a bear say, and we're going to have a look at that, aren't we? And that, that's the old girl there, that family there, that sister. Well, that's family there too, <laughs> isn't it, eh? What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, they're yeah. both family. Yeah, they're both family. Mm. This, this, one here, this one here's been on the wine, so I don't know how this <laughs> one's going to cope later on. What, oh, babe? Fine. Oh, fine. So what else has he got in the shed? He's got a triumph stag yes. in the shed, I yes. know of, yes. yes.
about and he's that. He's got a cute we? little mini. And he's got a cute <laughs> little mini too, Andy, <laughs> eh? <laughs> you could be called a mini, couldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> You're only a little wanky, sweetie. Yeah, babe. <laughs> yeah, babe. Let's go, babe. Hey, guys. We've got to go. I just... Oh, well, no, I forgot to tell you guys. This is our abode for the night. We've got a full-size fucking kitchen here. Look at this full-size fridge here. Right here. <laughs> got the twoies in it and the babe. Full-size person. Yeah, full-size person there. Yeah. Kimmy. <laughs> and up. the uh, No, I can't show them. Oh. The shit the light's not on, babe. Oh. Yeah, but we got a house here tonight, so we're... Oh, we're you want to show the bedroom? Two oh, single two fucking friends, <laughs> man! Well, I don't think my sister, she wants me to be with Kim. Because she's put me in two single fucking beds. Yeah. Now, what's to go there, hey, babe? Yeah, something going on in there. You were offered yes. a full well, zone, Euro key bed. zone, yep. blow up, Euro yep. bed. Euro bed, then you yep. could drive a fucking four-wheeler over. Yep. Yes. You watch too many eggs. That's a problem with palms. Sorry guys, but you know, they believe too many commercials. I never drove a four-wheel drive over it, but I have tried it. Me and your sister tried it. Well, that's good enough. That's good enough for me for not to try. So I'm going to Yeah, yeah, that's good enough for me not to try. So it only took five minutes, did it guys? No, just laid on it. Oh, we don't want to know anymore. We don't want to know. Hey, guys, we're going to, go. we're going to be stuck up here for the next couple of nights, probably. Yeah. Uh, until they get sick of us and they fucking kick us out, which quite often happens with Kimmy Russ Adventures, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they get sick of us. You have to behave yourself. Or until we run out of grog, anyway. <laughs> we ran out. Hey, guys, we've got to go. Right. G'day everybody, we told you we are going to show you this motorbike that Mick has got, which is the brother-in-law, isn't it, yep. up in Canberra, so we're about to show you what he has here and he's about to explain what it is and where he got it from and that. Okay Mick, tell us what this bike is. So it's a 1965 BSA Lightning Clubman. What size engine is it? 650 twin. And these are one of the rarer ones are they? They only made 200. So, where did you get the bike from and when? So, well, I bought it in, in England, so I've owned it for 47 years. But you had to get it out to Australia, didn't you? Yep. So, how long ago Been did you bring here it? Here? Four years. It's been here. Four years, and it came out here in bits? No, it, well, it, it was kind of like that, but it had no no guts in the engine or anything, because it had been all pulled apart in England and uh, kept in my brother's garage and his loft. And <laughs> so Mick is a mechanic though, so you rebuilt the engine and that, didn't uh, you, the majority of it? Yeah, it's all, it's all been re fully rebuilt now. So um, hopefully we can do some road testing and like the Australian weather. If it ever stops raining. Yeah, if it ever stops raining. Okay, give her a bow and see if she starts, mate. I'll try. It always does when there's nobody watching. Of course. But Bikes are all the same, mate. They're temperamental like women. <laughs> <laughs> I'll reserve comment on that yes. one. So these high compression engine? Pretty much. So this is from a cold start, guys. This is from... When was it last started? Oh, six weeks, baby. She goes.
Ooh, ah. almost fired. Could have been, been quicker than that, but anyway. Should they show the oil? Uh, make sure the oil pump's working. Yep. What's this? Internal oil pumps up? Hey. What sort of oil pump? Internal or? Yeah, it's in here. Right, okay. Yeah. Just uh whole original actuator. You can buy new modern push pumps, but they're just so expensive. Yeah. So very nice. Check it out, you know. So how many K's has it done? Roughly. What all together? Oh, yeah. I think it's the entire life. I don't know because yeah. I don't know because if you look at the, that's a rev counter. Yep. That's original. Yep. Speedo has been replaced. So what's that speedo? Well, speedo? that's well, it's it's still off of one of these, but it it's didn't come with the bike, so I don't know how many. Right. Okay. It, uh, you know, it's just done that much since I since I've owned it. And obviously you've done modifications to make it better on the road, like indicators? Yeah, yeah. Indicators but and mirrors? Indicators, mirrors, yeah. Never, never came out of factory with either. Right, and but, no uh, rear indicators, no front indicators? Um, no, no, not, not from the factory, no. Yeah, just, yeah, that's about it, really. Just the, the, the indicators. But, you know, modern day traffic, you just got to watch it. Cause you were no, saying you were There's no stoplight on the... On the brake. Right, okay. There's only a stoplight on the rear brake. Right, okay. So, modern day traffic, just not used to stuff like this, you know, so. No. Um, well, you've got to make it as safe as possible for yourself, don't you? Well, that's it. As simple you as know. that, before you get rear-ended. You're saying you did have a close call before you put the indicators on. Yeah, and um, I'm in the middle lane. Checked before I pulled out, you know, but uh, this car just came through the traffic lights. Yeah. God knows how quick we're doing it. We're probably doing 150 clicks. Ah. Come straight right. past me, you know. And you put a horn on it too? Oh, it had a horn on from new. Oh, I did it? Yeah. Right, okay. So there were just no indicators, no mirrors. Right, okay. Yeah, they came out with uh, all the other stuff, fairly normal. Um, so the plan is? That's not factory, but. How come that, what's there for the? Uh, for just a cooler for the brakes. Right, okay. It's not factory, but it's a period accessory right okay that's it really that's it you know is as is but um i put new forks seals new bushes and everything in the forks new brake shoes because when it came here you see it had the original brake shoes in it yes you told us about that they were asbestos weren't they well they had asbestos in them and so you had they, trouble didn't you getting it into well they, it, it it cost me ten thousand dollars yeah it cost me three thousand dollars for them to take the wheels off and throw the brake shoes away. Which it could have been done in England by your brother, couldn't it? If like you had a known. They were already out. If I'd have known, he could have just left them out. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, that's it. They find these things out. So yeah, the government, uh, the government could apparently they could have fined me seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Really? I'll be buggered. And they're like. Excuse me, why don't you just... Uh, and they said, well, we'll just throw them... Assume that there is asbestos in them and just throw them away. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not our responsibility. Because if it doesn't, you know, it, it's up to you. So then I had to get a proper... a guy yeah. to so, come along and, and take them out. So it. when it got to Australia, how long was the hold-up for before you got it? How long did they keep it for? Before it, that, be, uh, before it was handed six over? Six weeks, I think. Fair dinkum. Just for brake pads. And they kept telling me, you know, that, um, oh, you know, and, and, and as it got this and filled this form out and filled that form out. And they told me in the beginning that it was costing $170 a day for storage. Oh, you're kidding. Man, I found out that that was rubbish. Yep. So somebody were trying to scam me somewhere along the line. It was the government, the mate. Eh? Of course it was the government. Well, it was either that or the guy that 
you know, in the shed. I don't know, but uh, I said, oh, someone's yanking my chain. I'll come down and see you. And strangely enough, the very next day, I got a phone call saying it had passed. <laughs> <laughs> so I could come and collect it properly. So? Uh, oh, right. That's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> so, intention for this bike is to keep it like it is. Yep. You're not going to do paint work or anything, you're just keeping it... I probably will. Oh, I'll definitely do these. Right, where they're Panties, cracked. Because they're, yeah. They're, is they're, that fiberglass, yeah, is it? Yeah, fiberglass, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll definitely there. paint them up. And I might even paint the tank, but I'm not going to re-chrome. And I'll probably... So what but, is this? What's this on here? This chrome bit is that actual chrome? Is it? Yeah. The tank's been chromed, then painted across the well, top. Well, the whole the whole tank's chrome. Yeah. Right. Okay. As you can see through this chip. And this is original paintwork on it. Yeah. Yeah. The lines are not. I, I attempted to do them hundred years ago when I was a kid. Is uh, that painted? Yeah. Yeah, painted. But that's on, the way they are, though. That, yeah. yeah. But it needed a professional. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you know, is what it is. That's yeah. what you did when you were. 16. Well, that's it. Have you, you've had this since you were 16. Fair dinkum. Oh, maybe 17, but yeah, like the. I won't tell you how old he is now, but he is retired now. So he's had it for a long time, a hell of a long I time. For 47, and, 47 years. And longer. really, it's amazing. It's amazing that someone kept it in storage for you since you've been in Australia for how many years? Since 1990, so 30. So he left it in England at his brother's? Yeah. Yeah and he's been here all that time, they've kept it for him, and then arranged to get it put out when he was ready. The ship it over. <laughs> well, that's absolutely marvellous, Mick. I think we'll leave it at that, eh? Great. Good on you, thank you. Great bike. Good on you, Russ. Good okay you. then, thank you very much for telling us about it, mate. No problem. The BSA Lightning Clubman was developed from the BSA Lightning and designed as a production racing motorcycle. With a special gold and black paint scheme, drop handles, rear set footrest, a crank kick start, twin carburetors, Siamese two-in-one exhaust system, a single seat and close ratio gears fitted as standard. With the top speed in the right conditions of 120 miles an hour, it competed against the Triumph Bonneville as the top bikes for the 1960s. Launched in September 1964, the Lightning Clubman was only in production until October 1965, resulting in a limited production run of 200 machines. So original Clubman models are highly sought after. The BSA Spitfire replaced the Lightning Clubman as BSA's highest performance machine in 1966. Well, what an absolutely beautiful bike that was. I'm keen to ride it next time we go over. It was a bit wet this time. But anyway, we were here for a couple of nights in Canberra. Well, let us just say, a lot of grog went down and we talked a lot of shit for a lot of time. As we do when we're on holidays. But coming up in the next episodes, we have a look around Canberra at a couple of places, then hit the road for the East Coast. A bigger one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Bigger uh, is better. It doesn't matter because... Kimmy's always saying bigger is better, aren't you, Kimmy? So, uh, are you <laughs> boys... I don't know what she's talking about, but she says bigger uh, is better. Must, must be hard to do. Must be hard to do. Are you boys being competitive now? No, no, no. no, no, no. With no, your bikes? This we're, is Jap bikes, no, isn't we're it? Just, no, we're doing Compared the, to Harley's. We're doing the divide. The, yes. year, the years. The oh, the years. years. Uh, and I how, Harley, how Harley has actually gone back. I'm not doing oh. Japanese. Um, oh, yes. Uh, yep. I'm doing English. In Japanese, yeah. And, and, and Harley Davidson, American. How, how Harley's gone back. Open up the window. I'm breathing in the last of September. I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a giant